Hi, today I'm gonna show you how to knit this hoodie raglan top down sweater. Let's get started. Hello guys, first of all, please check my description box down below. I put the uh, link for my website. If you can go to my website, you can download the uh, written pattern for this sweater. And so many information in that written pattern, such as needle size, the yarn I use, my gauge and all that. So please make sure to download the uh, written pattern. This is complete seamless, size adjustable, top down raglan sweater with placket color and hood. This is going to be a long video, but I want you to watch until the end because you really have to make a plan ahead. I made a plan really well, but I still have two regrets. So if you don't want to have any regret after you're done, please watch my video till the end. The one regret is about the placket, which is the, the front part. I should have deeper placket. I didn't really think about the rib when I make a plan. So after I add rib, it's a little bit smaller than I expected. It's really okay because I'm a small person, right? However, I could have one inch or inch and a half lower so the opening for my face if when i you know put the hood on it's going to be a little bit bigger so again it's okay but it could have been lower i will talk about it later again and now i want to talk about the lens of the body. It's quite short because again, I'm a t tiny person. I don't want my sweater too long, especially this time. This is kind of springtime sweater. And I really want to stop increasing right after the raglan line meets underneath of my armpit. So the sleeves won't be too baggy, which means I don't have to decrease when I knit the uh, sleeves. You know what I'm saying? If it's baggy, you kind of have to decrease the uh, sleeves towards to the uh, end, right? And if you want to knit longer sleeve, you probably have to decrease some stitch and i will put the link down below i knitted a long sleeve sweater before and i will put the uh, the detail in my description box so if you want to have longer sleeve and want to decrease some stitch you should watch that video just for the uh, sleeves also the uh, button hole I needed it the uh, the color rib first I didn't actually make the uh, button hole when I was knitting the rib I create the uh, button hole afterwards and this technique is good to know so I will show you later obviously all right now i want to talk about my swatch 
my swatch four inch across. I have 18 stitches. Now I need my neck measurement, a little bit bigger than usual because I didn't want to have tight hood. As you can see, hood attached to the neck, right? So my gauge is 4 inch versus 20 inch. That's my neck measurement. 18 stitch versus X stitch, which is my cast on, you know, base number. 4 times X stitches equal 20 inch times 18 stitches. 4X equal 360. X equal 90. This is my base, which means if I want to knit round neck, this is my cast number. But this time, I'm not going to knit round neck. So this is just the base. And this number has to be multiple of 6. 90 is multiple of 6. So I'm going to use this number. But if you number is not multiple of 6, just pick the number close to your base number. So now you have to find out your magic number. So your base number divided by 6. Mine, 90 divided by 6 is 15. 15 is my magic number. So back piece, magic number times 2. So 15 times 2 equal 30. Sleeves, just magic number times 1, 15. Front piece, this is important. Same as back piece minus placket stitch. So magic number times 2 is the back, right? So same as front. So 30 minus 8. So front piece is 22. This is important. Now, you have to decide how wide you want for the uh, placket. This was one of my regrets. Eight stitches for the placket was tiny bit bigger. So I should have done with six stitches, but it's too late, you know. So you really have to think right now. Anyway, I picked the eight. So my front is 22. This is good because front divided by two piece, right side and left side. So this front piece number has to be multiple of two. So if this number became like odd number, like 21 or 19, you kind of have to play with the numbers. Okay, my summary is 30 stitch for back, 15 for sleeve each side, right? So 15 times plus 15 is 30, and 22 for front, equal 82. My cast on number to start is 82. This is how you have to find out your cast on number. I hope you understood. So let's move on to cast on. First of all, for me, 82. I don't know how much yarn I use, so I wrap the yarn, go around the needle like that, and that's a 10 stitch. So this is 20, 30, 40, and then double up, 40 plus 40 is 80, and a little bit of extra. Then now you make a slip knot. And as you already know, you have to use contrast color of scrap yarn to make a cast on. Because I want to keep the, uh, the original stitch for hood. All right, so after you cast on, 
wrong side to start. So you have to make all pearl, whichever the color you want. I'm using light brown first, all pearl, and I'm going to add markers. You really have to divide each section. So, as I told you earlier, starting front piece, this is going to be a left side of my front. So, 11 stitch. By the way, later I am going to add more markers. So, please sort it out like a uh, using the, uh, the different color or different shape of the, uh, the marker. So as soon as you see the shape or color, you know which marker is which. You know what I'm saying? I use the uh, orange marker for marker A, B, C, D, which is increasing marker. I just knit 11 stitch and add marker A. That's got to be half of the front. Then next 15, I am going to make a pearl 15 stitch. That's got to be full sleeves. Then 30 stitch, that's for my back. Another 15 for another sleeve. Then 11 stitch for the other side of the uh, front piece. So again, this is my number. So you have to add markers according to your math. By the way, if you don't understand my math, I can figure it out for you, but you have to knit swatch and give me your swatch number and neck measurement. I will figure it out for you. And again, as I told you earlier, I want you to add three more markers. First of all, side markers. Can you see blue and pink? That's side. So right in the middle of the uh, sleeves. Also, in the center of back piece. By the way, for the side markers, you really have to use your imagination. I only have 82 stitches altogether. Divided by 2 is 41. However, you have to include 8 stitch for placket. So 82 plus 8 is 90. This was my baseline, right? So 90 divided by 2 is 45. So that's my half. So you really have to count from mid-stitch, which is center in the back. Then count evenly. So what do I need those two side markers for? That's actually for back of the uh, neck. I am going to add few rows only for the back of the neck using technique called Japanese show rows. If you have more rows than front piece, it fits you better. So I need side markers to indicate you can't not pass that side marker because like I said, I am going to knit only back piece for a little while. You know what I'm saying? And my half is 90 divided by two, so 45. However, I need to adjust some stitch because that'll be easier. So I decide I am going to add 12 rows. So I put side marker to make 
forty-eight stitch for the back piece. Forty-eight divided by twelve rows is four stitch. My magic number for Japanese short row is four stitch. Please remember that. So, first of all, you have to decide how many rows you want, and then the half of the、uh, the stitch count, which is back piece, divided by whatever row you want to add, that. Gives you a magic number. So let's move on to Japanese short rows. Row number one, knit side, which is right side. Just knit all the way down to second side marker. So knit all the way down to side marker. Pass the.、Uh, First side marker, which is blue for me. So knit until the other side. There we go. I changed the mid marker, by the way, and then just knit, knit, knit all the way down, and that's the second. Side marker, the pink one. By the way, one thing I want to tell you: you start knitting from the beginning, right? And then once you hit the、uh, the second side marker, you turn around, which means from the beginning to the、uh, first marker. Now you have one row more than this side. Please remember that, and ended up you balanced it out. So don't worry about it. So you hit the second side marker, turn. Now you're facing to pearl side, which is wrong side. There we go. So yarn front, which means working yarn. Yarn front, and then slip one stitch purl wise like that, and then clip marker, clip on to working yarn like that, and then all purl. That's it until side marker. The other side, which is blue for me, right? So, anyway, this side I am going to use green clip marker. So just pearl, pearl, pearl until the other side of the side marker, the blue one. This is row number two. This is easy, and I haven't even talked about my magic number yet. But I will. Here it comes side marker. Remove the、uh, side marker and turn. This is row number three. Knit side, which is right side. Working yarn back. Yarn back. Slip one stitch purlwise, and then now using. Orange clip marker onto working yarn like that, and then hold the、uh, marker, then knit. That's it. However, knit now until last four stitch. There we go. This is my magic number four stitch before last gap. This is the at、uh, the last green clip-on marker. Behind that, there's a gap because you didn't knit through. You turn around, right? So there's a gap. So from that gap, you count your magic number. For me, four stitch. So one, two, three, four. 
So you need until there. Did you get that? Four stitch from the gap, and I put the marker for just in case. So you knit until that pink temporary marker, which is four stitch before the last gap. By the way, let's prepare this side. That's the gap you just create. I just create. So count four from that gap. One, two, three, four. That's my magic number. And I add blue marker. And here comes. Now I'm reaching the pink marker, right? Which is four stitch from the gap, right? So remove the marker again, then turn. Now row number four, pearl side, wrong side, yarn front, slip one pearl wise, and then add green clip on marker onto working yarn, then pearl until when yes last full stitch before the last gap I already put the temporary blue marker I believe so until that blue marker there and you have to do this back and forth super easy and now can you see, you know, the, the length of your knitting is shorter and shorter. But in the center of the back, you need more and more rows. That's how you raise the back of your neck. I'm actually adding the uh, temporary marker, you know, before I forget, right? And now I'm on the, uh, the pearl side, so I'm gonna make a pearl until the other side of the, uh, the blue marker. There you go. And turn. And you just have to repeat row number three and row number four until your desire rows. For me, 12 rows. So I will have six orange marker and six green marker which consider 12 rows i just you know go back and forth back and forth super easy but this is not the end anyway i believe this is last green marker there you go, turn around, remove the pink marker, and then yarn front slip one pearl wise, and then put the green marker on the working yarn and make a pearl because you're on wrong side. And this is last, last JSR. Slip one pearl wise, put the orange marker. That's it. So now I have six orange marker and six green marker, total of 12. And like I said before, I want to increase 12 rows. Can't you see? It's really hard because it's a little bit curled up. But 6 green and 6 orange. And as I said, this is not the, you know, the end of the uh, Japanese short row. You create the uh, gap whenever you turn, right? Now, 
you have to close that gap. I'm just trying to show you, you know, in the center of the back is the longest length, obviously, right? Because you just go back and forth, back and forth, and the, the shorter and shorter. So, by the way, do you still remember which side has one row less? Actually, not this side, the other side, the green clip side, one row less than the other side. Remember that. And I will balance it out. Now, let's close the gap. Row number one, or knit until the gap. So you have to pass that clip. Now, you have a gap. And pull the green marker like that and hook on to left needle, remove the marker, and then knit two together. This is it. This method close that gap. So knit until next gap. So you have to pass that, you know, the marker stitch. There we go. And then grab the uh, marker, pull, and hook onto left needle, remove the marker, and then that create new stitch and original stitch, knit two together. That's it. Again, knit until next gap. There we go. Hook onto left needle. So the, the marker is just the indication which stitch you have to pick. That's it. And then the new stitch and original stitch, you have to do the uh, knit two together to close the gap. You know what I'm saying? It's super easy. Knit until the gap, and then pull that clip, hook onto left needle, and then knit two together. This is last gap to close. Then keep knitting until the end. Because you knit until the end, now both sides are the same rows. Did you get that? So you don't really have to worry. After this, it's all balanced out. Both side, same level. So please don't worry about it. And after you knit until the end, you turn around and then you are going to close the other side of the gap. The difference is now, pearl side. There you go. You just close knitting side gap. Here comes wrong side, which is pearl side. Row number two, all pearl. Same method. Until the first gap. You have to pass the, uh, you know, orange marker to meet the gap, right? Long way. And here comes. Pass the uh, center of back and pearl, pearl, then pass that orange marker stitch. And right after that, there's a gap, right? And same thing. Pull the uh, orange marker, hook onto left needle, remove the uh, orange marker, and this time, purl two together to close the gap. Simple. Create the new extra stitch, and then 
pearl two together to decrease to close the uh, gap remove the uh, orange marker and then pearl two together to close the gap easy let's do one more time so I'm just you know uh, showing you which stitch I'm using to create the, uh, the one extra stitch so if you know which stitch you're picking up you don't really need to do the, uh, the clip on you know what I'm saying but it's easy to forget which stitch you're knitting up right that's why japanese short row use the uh, clip on marker and i i like it you know it's easy there you go i'm getting confused i guess I think I did something wrong. I not sure. But, you know, I fixed it anyway. I'm counting and then make sure, you know, all the uh, stitch counts are all same. Anyway, whenever you get confused, count the stitch and don't assume you have right stitch count. All right? Anyway, so I finished this row. This is end of the uh, short row. There we go about inch and a half higher than both side this extra work fit you better so now forget about the uh, you know short rows right you have to increase on the you know other marker increasing markers just like a regular you know raglan sweater increasing row number one right side knit until markers every markers then make one right slide the marker and make one left i use my original abbreviation make one right one and make one left two because i am not going to use running thread i am going to use previous stitch okay right side of the marker use make one right one one means one down that's the stitch i have to pick one down and right side because this is right side of the marker that stitch which is previous stitch right so the the one from the hook picking up and hook onto left needle then knit one there and that's the uh, original stitch so knit original so i just increase one stitch now left side of the marker make one left two you can't really grab left side of the uh, previous stitch because it will 
be twisted, right? So the left side, you have to knit one first. There we go. And then this one is the stitch you just create. So one more down. So second down from the hook, you have to pick that one and then knit there. This is make one left two. So I'll show you one more time. This is make one right one. So one down. One down. Hook on to left, then knit one, knit original one. This is easy, right? Slide the marker, knit one first, then second stitch down. Right there. It's hard to see, but hook on to left needle and knit. This is make one left two. I'll show you one more time just make one right and make one left zoom up hook from hook one down this is make one right so right side of the uh, stitch you pick and hook onto left needle and knit one there then knit the uh, original slide the marker this one, you can't pick the left side of the stitch, so you have to knit first. However, that one is just the one you just create. You have to pick the one below. So second stitch from the hook, you have to knit. Did you get that? So. Increasing row, every marker, which is four markers, right? You have to increase. So total of eight stitch you will increase. And then increasing row number two, wrong side, or pearl. And you repeat increasing row number one and row number two until the raglan line meets under your armpit and this is up to you if you want to you know knit loose sweater you can increase more it's really up to you and now i want to talk about changing in color i change the uh, color every 20 rows don't include the uh, the Japanese short row at the back, the front piece. That's the base. Okay? And at the same time, you have to make a plan for the placket. You know, how deep you want. And you really have to think. My target length for the uh, placket was 5 inches. Five inches deep placket wasn't actually deep enough for me because I totally forgot about the rib. When I add the uh, rib, the uh, opening for the uh, front became shorter. So I should have 6.5 inch at least for the uh, placket so please make a plan ahead carefully anyway just keep knitting until your target placket length i am actually changing the uh, the color now I'm using blue because I just knit 20 rows. So you really have to count, by the way. Whenever you knit deep enough for your placket, 
you will connect that part. Number one rule: you have to connect on right side, which means I just finish knitting wrong side, and now you turn around and start knitting on right side. That's the time you have to connect. Also, when you connect, you will add new cast there, and do remember. At the very beginning, I subtract eight stitch from my base cast on number. So now you have to add that number. So if you subtract six stitch for placket, you have to add six stitch there to connect. However, before you start. Adding the a new cast. One more thing you have to do, which is transfer half of the a stitch and make a new begin. Because if you start knitting right there, which means in the center of the placket will be new begin. I don't want that because. After you connect the placket, you will knit in round. Knitting in round, changing the color of yarn, you create little bit jog when you change the color of yarn, and you don't want that happen right in the front of your sweater. I will try to minimize that jog. However. You still don't want that jog, the tiny bit in front. So, if you create the start new begin in the center of back, it's better. So, transfer half of the、uh, stitch like that, and create new begin, and rule after this. You have to face to right side and knit, and start increasing row number one. Knit in round. As I told you, when you connect placket, you have to face to right side because now no more wrong side, so has to be on right side. And one more thing, I have to talk about. Which do you have to do first? Connecting the placket, or stop increasing? It's really up to you. Some people wanna have deep placket, but if it's really really deep, which means you're increasing more, so you might wanna stop. Increasing first, or if you want to knit placket like mine, deep enough but not too deep, like five inch. Then you have to close the, I mean, connect the placket first. It's really up to you, but you really have to watch out both of them and make a plan ahead. Anyway. I am going to use blue yarn because they're not twenty rows yet. So I join the、uh, blue yarn again because this is my new beginning, right? And when you start from middle of nowhere like this. You will have a little bit of the gap when you come around, just before the second row, and I will talk about to minimize that little gap later on. Anyway, just knit until the end, and you have to still increase right at the、uh, markers. Okay, so don't forget that. And here comes. I knit half of 
clear project and no more stitch which is you know the placket right again i have to add new cast for me eight stitch do you remember the number you subtract from the uh, your base you have to add it for me eight stitch and again this eight stitch was a little bit too big maybe one or two stitches less will be ideal for me but it's too late anyway after you add new cast keep knitting again this is increasing row number one so you have to increase right at the uh, marker please don't forget about it and I will tell you how to avoid the uh, little gap at the uh, begin marker this is second row so I'm gonna just knit look carefully if I see, try to knit, there's a big gap. So it's a little bit like make one left technique. You can pick up the, uh, the stitch from behind or front. It doesn't really matter. I did from behind and then knit two together there. So create the uh, new stitch and then knit two together just like Japanese short row or make one left two see there's no gap there anymore so after that you just keep knitting and keep knitting and if you need to change your color of yarn please do it and I just want to check seven inch right now and I already know how long I have to knit until I hit the eight and a half inch. So I still have to knit more, I mean, increase more. And now 20 rows I knit with blue yarn. So I start knitting with brown yarn. And now I have to actually tell you how to avoid the uh, color jog. On the first row, you just knit, same as usual, knit around. And second row, after you change the uh, color, you gotta do a little trick to avoid the uh, color jog. And this time, um, use the uh, make one right technique okay so knit until end there you go there's a little gap slide the marker and if i knit right there gap and color job so Pick up the uh, the one stitch before I mean previous row and hook on to left needle so blue and brown yarn and that's the sign you're doing right so second row you're picking up the uh, previous stitch right side just like make one right which means two different color of stitch on the left needle just like that blue and brown and you have to knit those two stitch together and if you use this technique you can minimize the color jaw and right now you can't really see because you just did it but after you knit little more rows you will notice
again, rule for the uh, minimize the uh, the color job on the second row after you change the yarn you do make one right one which means both stitch are not same color just like blue and brown and after this row you don't have to do anything just knit around and around now I hit my target, so I have to stop increasing. And I will have to separate the uh, sleeves from the, uh, the body. So make sure you just finish the uh, increasing row number two, which is not increasing row, right? It's easy, easy, I should say, to separate the... Uh, sleeves also you really have to think i mean remember which row you're on because whenever you try to knit the uh, sleeves you really want to know where to start for me this is actually seventh row of the uh, brown yarn and i just knit until the uh, the marker right and that's the sleeve stitches and no more increasing so just remove the uh, marker and with the uh, scrap yarn transfer all the uh, sleeve stitch which means I am not knitting sleeve so I will have to start on seventh row of brown yarn when you start knitting for your sleeve you know what i'm saying so you really have to write it down now and this is end of the uh, sleeve so remove the uh, marker you don't need it anymore because no more increasing and you separate the uh, sleeves and tie the knot then now you connect the body part and this is important I add four stitch before you connect however if you want to get the uh, bigger size for the uh, body you have to increase more stitch as a new cast depends really depend I this time they don't want to have the uh, the big chunky buggy you know sweater for sleeve and body so I only add four stitches and I know I increase enough so I add four stitches underneath of the uh, sleeves and you really have to remember how many stitch you add because you need that number later anyway I just finished the uh, first sleeve and you do exactly same thing the other sleeve so you just knit all the way down to next marker and remove transfer all the stitch onto scrap yarn and here comes four new cast and then knitting until the begin marker after this let's finish the body first you don't have to increase or decrease anything just knit straight down until your desired length here comes that's the placket right and back part I raised the uh, the 12 rows so a little bit higher and I separate the uh, the sleeves and you just knit remember 
every twenty rows you have to change. Well, you know, if you wanna need less row to change, that's up to you. Fifteen, fine. Ten, fine. Or thirty, fine. It's really up to you. I picked the twenty, and you can try it on if you need it, right? To make sure the body part long enough, and I decide this is long enough, and I wanna. Start making rib. So, before you start, last row before the rib, you count stitches, and make sure stitch counts are multiple of four because I'm using knit two purl two rib. If you're using knit one purl one rib. Has to be multiple of two, but this time need to purl two rib, so has to be multiple of four. And if you need to adjust one or two stitch, just do it. If you want to increase one stitch, you can do make one right or make one left. And if you need to decrease, use the uh, need to together method. It's really up to you. For me, I didn't actually have to adjust. It was multiple of four. So I have to knit one more round to make it twenty rows. Then I change the color. But before. I change the color and start making rib. I have to change the needle, smaller size. My main needle are five millimeter, so I change to four point five, half size down. And I am going to tell you one more important thing here. So, change the color, and you think I'm going to start making rib, which is knit two and purl two. No, I. By the way.、Um, Twisted the、uh, the yarn like that, so I can avoid the jaw. Anyway, this is bad example. Start need to and purl to right away. Why bad example? As you can see, when you change the、uh, the color of yarn and start using purl, you see the purl stitch. With previous color of yarn, and it doesn't look too good. So, if you're doing same as me, you know, changing the color, and then you want to start rib, you have to knit one round first, so that purl stitch doesn't show. Can you see that? You know, the purl stitch. Blue and brown again. You don't want that. If you want that, you know, as a design, fine. But this time I didn't want to. So knit one round so the purl stitch doesn't show, right? Then start making rib. And by the way. Don't forget about the、uh, color jog thing. Picking up the、uh, stitch, right stitch, and knit two together. As you can see, blue and brown, two different color, and you have to 
knit two together there. The first stitch was kind of loose, so it's kind of hard, but just take your time. And again, now you're making rib, which is repeat off, knit two and purl two. And I wanted to have long rib this time. And I already made a plan to knit 20 rows, including that first knit run round. So the rib part, 90, 19 rows. All right. So again, if you want that, you know, the pearl stitch shown with different color, you can start making rib right away, right after the, you change the uh, color. But I didn't want that happen. So when you change the uh, color, don't use pearl stitch. Knit one round, then start making rib. So the pearl stitch doesn't show. And again, I will knit 19 more rows, make it 20 total with blue, then bind off. And I am going to use stretchy cast off technique because at the bottom of the sweater, I don't like kind of tight tension. So here comes. Done. Remove the uh, marker and cut the uh, long tail and you need tapestry needle. Quite long, so be careful not to, you know, tangle. So stretchy cast off. Pearl two, like that. And do not drop any stitch off yet. Pearl two, and don't pull too hard. And then knit first one, like that. Then you can drop the first stitch off. Don't pull too hard. There you go. That's it. And then repeat again. Pearl two together. Do not drop any stitch off. And then knit first one. Then drop the uh, stitch off. I use this stretchy cast off technique for sleeves as well so i'm not gonna show you every detail when you when i knit the uh, sleeves so please remember this but i didn't use the uh, stretchy cast off for the uh, placket color rib just a regular you know bind off there because opening was big enough. Anyway, you repeat until one last stitch and weave the uh, ends off after that. That's about it. And if you pull so hard, um, it won't be stretchy. So you gotta be very careful. Weave the ends off and the body is done. And two more things, which is the hood and sleeves. And I would like to knit hood first because sleeves are super easy. There we go. Body's done. Let's look. There we go. Nice. 
I'm glad I made the longer rip this time. And that part I have to finish. First of all, don't forget to change the needle again. You need to use main needle, which is 5 millimeter for me. First of all, pick up all the uh, stitch carefully. So that's the begin. And it's easy to see because the first stitch is kind of sandwiched in between that scrap yarn, right? This is the reason why I use contrast color of yarn to make a cast on. See? It's easy to pick. I'm sorry, it's not showing. There we go. This one and next one. And you're picking up the uh, stitch like that. I really don't like knitting up. So if I can save the original stitch, I usually do. Because knitting up, you know, sometimes you pick wrong, you know, stitch and then doesn't look too good. But if the original looks good much better than knitting up for me anyway so i knit up i count 82 that's the number i started right then now you can untie the uh, scrap yarn and the hood is quite easy now you gotta knit in flat. Don't knit in round. If you knit in round, you're gonna close the opening, right? So I am going to use blue yarn because you know every 20 rows I want to change the color. So you really have to think about that. So starting on right side, it doesn't really matter, but I should start with knit and then end with purl. Just like, you know, any others. So start knitting stock knit stitch, which is knit on right side and purl on wrong side. You got to do this until your desired length. Also, same rule, every 20 rows, you have to change the uh, color. I repeated three times, total of three times, which means total of 60 rows. Almost done. Make sure the hood covers your head. On the last row, I add two markers divided by three parts, two sides and one back of your head. You really have to divide it by three. So three section, first and last section has to be same stitch count. For me, 82 stitches divided by three is 27 something. So both side, I have 27 stitches and mid section, I have 28. Again, both side, first and last, same. The midsection, close enough, 28. That's how you divide it. 
if you really want to divide perfect number like same 27 27 27 you can decrease one stitch or increase two stitch for you know both side it's really up to you but it doesn't really matter anyway let's start top of the uh, hood part first of all transfer first section all the uh, the first section stitches onto right needle just like you're watching and remove the marker hood row number one right side change the uh, the color because i already knit 20 rows with the uh, blue knit until last one stitch before the second marker just knit across for the back of the hood yeah one stitch before the marker and you do ssk there almost there two more stitch to go knit and one more then now you do ssk one stitch slip and remove the marker and slip one more then knit those two together like that this is slip slip knit that's it this is first row and then turn around now you're facing wrong side yarn front hold it like that slip one purl wise look carefully and purl until one last stitch before color changes i'll show you what i'm talking about that part brown and blue i have to make purl two together there so you stop right there here it comes for all until one last stitch before the color change so pearl there and now light brown and blue you have to make pearl two together there that's it and turn now back to right side again row number three yarn back slip one purl wise make it tighter there and knit until one last stitch before the color changes again and then ssk so right there there's a little gap right so one brown one blue you have to do ssk there so stop before that here comes one more stitch to go knit there then ssk one light brown and blue ssk slip slip knit there and then turn around you just have to repeat row number two and row number three until both side section stitch are all gone so yarn front slip one purl wise and purl until one last stitch before the color changes right there right super easy and then i'll show you one more time just purl 
then one light brown and blue purl two together because this is wrong side then turn now right side knitting side so yarn back Slip one pearl wise and knit until when one last stitch before the color changes. Can't you see the uh, both side of the uh, uh, blue stitches less and less every row, obviously, but light brown, the midsection, you're not losing any stitch. Do you know why? Because one slip stitch at the very beginning. And whenever the blue, I mean side section stitch are all gone, no more slip stitch. So just make a pearl, no more slip. But the other side, I have to do one more pearl two together. So here comes. This is the last blue stitch, which I have to do pearl two together. There we go. Now I knitted it top of the hood. And I tied the knot there. And I am going to keep that stitch. Don't bind off. Can't you see? There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Now, let's move on to placket rib. Now you have to knit up both sides. The top of the, uh, the hood, I kept the, uh, the stitches so you don't really have to knit up, you just have to knit. So, except the uh, bottom of the uh, placket, you don't knit up yet. I decide I'm going to use the uh, blue yarn every rib same color that's my decision anyway you need up four stitch straight after you need up four stitch skip one space then start knitting up four stitches so repeat all four knit up one stitch skip then four knit up one stitch skip something like that so it's gonna be easier to make it multiple of four again i am going to use knit two and purl two rib but if it's hard for you don't worry about it you can adjust the uh, you know uh, stitch count later on right however important thing is both side of the uh, stitch count should be same or at least close And I'm using crochet hook right now because this way easier to knit up for me. If you've never done, you know, crochet, obviously you don't have a crochet hook. So you just have to knit up with the uh, regular needle. But if you've done crochet and you have crochet hook, 
use the uh, crochet hook because it's easy. Anyway, I'm just showing you one stitch skip and start knitting four up now. One. And knitting up the, uh, the stitches, you really have to use the uh, edge of the uh, stitch. Three, four, those four stitch is side by side. Anyway, just knitting up. You know, the, the using crochet hook, not using crochet hook, it's really up to you. Knit all the way up there. And whenever it's done, this side, just knit across on top of the hood. And I kept the uh, stitches, so super easy. After you knit across, start knitting up again. And same method. And try to make the number to become multiple of four. If not, you just have to adjust little number. Next row. Anyway, it's done. And my stitch count is multiple of four. So I don't really have to worry about it. However, one important thing. Count backwards. And first stitch on right side must be knit. In other words, last stitch on wrong side must be pro so you have to kind of think from that way that's wrong side right so need to pro two need to pro two it doesn't really matter whenever you finish the uh, knitting wrong side it has to be pro stitch yeah and then right side start knitting with knit stitch, right? So the first row, wrong side, and multiple of four for me. So I will start with knit two and purl two on wrong side. Ended up finish with purl two. You know what I'm saying? I'm knitting wrong side. And I want to finish with pearl stitch at the end of the wrong side. And I count, make sure. If I start with knit to pearl two, I finish with pearl. But if your stitch counter is not multiple of four, you might have to do repeat of purl two, knit two, and end it up with purl two, something like that. So you really have to think. Now I'm showing knit front and back. The second knit stitch, you do knit front and back. First one is knit stitch, and second stitch is purl. So this is for people who needs to adjust the uh, stitch number to make it multiple of four on second row. So the easiest for you is when you're knitting up, knit up stitch count multiple of four. Anyway, here comes end of the uh, placket color. So pearl two to finish. There we go. 
And now let's do the、uh, placket. It's so simple. First of all, you have to knit up one stitch from that bottom of the、uh, placket. Make sure working yarn. Goes the other side, and your needle g o down, g o straight down. I'll show you, okay? The needle straight down, right there. Yeah, the alignment is good, right? Just like you know, regular stitch level, and knit up there. One knit up stitch from bottom of the、uh, placket. Now, after purl two, you have one extra stitch. Turn around. So, one extra stitch at the very beginning, and then two knit stitch, right? You have one extra. Right there. So the first extra stitch and first knitting stitch you make knit two together there. Just connecting the part. So I want to use the,、uh, the knit two together method right there. That's why I want. The last stitch purl. And after that part, you just knit over knit stitch and purl over purl stitch to go the other side and then coming back. The other side of the、uh, placket, you don't have to do anything. Right there, you don't do the same thing. No, only this side. You have to connect the,、uh, the placket. Okay, so when you go the other side, turn around and coming back. And when you're coming back, you have to connect with the、uh, placket. So just knit over knit stitch and purl over purl stitch. So as you already know, the knitting rib, the first row important. If you make a mistake, you ruin everything. So I'm on the other side. I'm not attaching any placket. Just turn around and I'm on the、uh, wrong side and knit over knit, purl over purl stitch, right? And then meet you the other side, the I should say placket side or right side or whatever. Here comes. This is the end of the wrong side and placket side, right? So I'll show you. One more time, purl to end, and now you know you need two rows, right? So you really have to think straight down, yeah, right there. And you have to remember which stitch you have to knit up. Don't make any angle like that, straight down, and remember the stitch that stitch, yeah. And you use that stitch to knit up straight down. If you make, you know, angle the、uh, at the very bottom of the,、uh, the uh, placket, kind of pulling each other, right? It doesn't look too good. So you really have to make sure the needle g o straight down and then knit up right there. So now I knit one stitch up. From the bottom again and turn around one extra from the、uh, placket and first knitting stitch, you do knit two together to connect. And rest of them, same thing knit over knit stitch and purl over purl stitch.
the knitting direction is completely different, right? Now I'm knitting kind of sideway. So you can't really pick, you know, every stitch. You might have to, you know, adjust a little bit. And you just do same thing until last stitch of the uh, the bottom of the uh, placket, which is kind of corner, right? And here it comes. And this is actually end for me. I should have done one more row, but I didn't. So you really have to make sure about it. That's last knit two together and then start knitting again. However, this is bind off row. So bind off now and then make a purl on purl stitch, then bind off. And you do until last one stitch as just a regular bind off. Because of I took eight stitches for placket, the rib is longer than I expected. So this is one of my regret, but looks okay. So now the other side of the you know rib is not attached as you know, right? So now you can actually attach on top of it or inside. It's really up to you. But if you want to put the button, right? Uh, for me, the bottom rib, I put the button and top rib, button hole. So whichever you prefer, right? So I decide I am going to put the loose rib, um, inside and you just really sew at the bottom that's about it and make sure the corner part must be so secure start with the at the corner and then sew the bottom that's about it easy wasn't it by the way, some people already know that uh, I didn't create the uh, button hole when I was knitting rib, right? But don't worry about it. I will show you the technique to create the uh, button hole afterwards. And I'll show you later. First of all, I would like to move on sleeves. And sleeves are super easy. First of all, transfer all the sleeve stitch onto the needle, right? And do you remember, I have to knit seventh row. That's where I have to start. For you, I don't know. It all depends, right? So obviously, I have to use the brown yarn. And I have to knit up underneath of the armpit but I have to put the marker the green marker just before the last stitch and I add four new cast to connect right so I would like to have one extra knit up both sides so right after the last original stitch I knit up extra knit up stitch right there before the new cast coming up you know what i'm saying you have to kind of sandwich them with extra knit up i knit up one and then now knit up where i add new cast so i add four new cast so exactly same place i knit up so one extra at the very beginning and this is the third knit up 
and forth besides the extra. And now you will have to knit up one more, but I want you to add the other marker after the original four knit up. I'll tell you why later and knit extra stitch up here right now. So that's for original new cast knit up there and I have to sandwich those four stitch with extra knit up. Okay, the reason why I did that because if I connect uh, yarn like that, I create the a little gap here and there, right? So I create one extra stitch and then decrease that stitch on next row. That avoid, I should say, minimize the uh, the gap. I said starting on seventh row. That's for me. Just saying, don't forget how you know where you start. Anyway, so this is seventh row for me. Start knitting right until the green marker. After the green marker, there's one original stitch, right? So one last original stitch and one extra stitch. You do SSK there. Create one extra stitch and now next row you decrease. This way you can minimize the gap under your armpit. So it's easy to close that small gap instead of closing bigger gap. You know what I'm saying? And then knit across four stitch until the orange marker now. That's why I changed the, uh, the marker. Oh, and I put the uh, begin marker there in the middle of the uh, new cast. That's my new begin. Anyway, remove the orange marker. So one extra stitch and first original stitch. Now you have to do knit two together to minimize the big gap. And after that, just knit, knit, knit. And if you want to knit long sleeve and decrease some stitch, I will put the link in my description box and you really have to watch the other video how to do it. So again, knit until your desired length, change the needle for rib. I did exactly same as body. So knit one round. Then start making rib, which is repeat of knit two and purl two. I didn't start making rib right after the the uh, the change the color of yarn. You know why now. So the uh, purl stitch with different color doesn't show, right? And then again, I use the uh, stretchy cast off to finish the uh, sleeve. And you do exactly the same thing for the other side. Now I want to talk about the uh, buttonhole after you knit the rib. First of all, I'm using the, uh, the blue yarn. I spread in half. There's two thread because that way it's easy to um, saw 
button and everything, right? The the thick yarn, it's hard to add buttons and stuff. So anyway, I use thinner tapestry needle. This is good technique to remember because sometimes you want to change your mind. First, you didn't want to add button, but sometimes, you know, after you knit the uh, garment, you want to add it. So first of all, you have to find exactly where you want to add button. So I decide around there and, and make sure the top rib right there has to be buttonhole. The button you have to attach underneath. Don't mix that. And I found the pearl stitch part is easier to make buttonhole. So in the center of the rib, you kind of open the stitch like that. Just pull, pull, pull. There you go. Pull, pull. Create the hole. There you go. That's enough. It's not big, you know button or anything like that and grab two thread and tie the knot like that okay and right next to that knot, grab two thread like that, and sorry, I'm just adjusting the length, hook that thread onto that needle like that, and just pull slowly. Carefully, take your time, and then grab two thread like that again, and hook on. Did you get that part? Two thread and hook on, and pull slowly. There we go. And turn a little bit and grab two. Hook and pull slowly. And you just do this around to make sure that the hole stays open. That's why you grab two thread and then kind of tie them two together to stay open. Easy, isn't it? However, if you want to add big button, this is not good method. This is for, you know, regular size of button, I believe. And looks quite small but don't worry about it it will get bigger over time anyway right but buttonhole so this is good at the very beginning it's kind of tight to put the uh, you know bot button through but once you do that two or three times, it get a little bit stretched out. So don't worry about it. So just sewing, you know, around to make the uh, hole 
open there you go and the tail ends go the other side and then whip the ends off that's that's pretty much about it like that and then just whip the ends off almost there it's quite long video I'm getting tired you probably getting tired of watching but if you want to knit this project successfully you have to watch this video until the end and make a plan ahead this is important and now attach the uh, button one tip don't attach the button right in the center okay that's the right in the center right and just one or two stitch close to the body side because when you uh, close the uh, the color put the button it kind of pulling each other right so doesn't look good if the the rib both rib pulling each other and showing the the bottom side it doesn't have to be perfect perfect but you want to get the better sweater right so just to remember if you put the button, just move one or two stitch closer to the body, not to the edge. Looks a little bit silly if you put the button not in the center, but you know what I mean. Once you wear the sweater and put the button, you know what I'm talking about. And lastly, make sure the button is secured. I think pretty much it. So, couple regret for me were the placket wasn't deep enough. I totally forgot about adding rib. And the placket stitch number eight was tiny bit too many. Six was maybe better. And what else? Mm, I guess that's about it my regret i did the uh, avoid the uh, color job and yeah i i think those two see the uh, the first time it's a little bit hard to put the button can you see it's right in the middle right and the both side of the fabric is not really pulling each other to show off the bottom rib and hood perfect I love it it's quite good overall I'm happy it took me about five days to finish this so if you're kind of slow knitter maybe 
a week to 10 days. The key is make a plan ahead. That's about it. Enjoy meeting. Bye for now.